Hey, thanks for checking out the Solid Verbal. Now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel for college football content all off season long. Let's start with Michigan. Michigan, of course, went up until the playoff game against TCU before they lost. And that was a game that they very easily could have won. 51 to 45 was the final score. Um, Not a lot wrong with this team. Not a lot wrong with that team. Certainly not a lot wrong with this team. Right. One of the other, I guess, higher level points of intrigue is the fact that some of the top guns in the league have a lot back. Mm -hmm. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State all have a lot back. And that's part of why I think there's so much excitement at the very top of the Big Ten. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, a bit of a revelation last year for Michigan. I, I think we were doubtful. Yeah. Initially, we thought maybe there would be some growing pains with him. There were a few yippy moments where he did the tech bubble thing where he just runs back and back and back and tries to make a play waits for somebody to get open. But they they drilled that out of him pretty quickly. And he ended up being super clutch down the stretch. Yeah, I, I would say really big still throws. some processing questions against TCU holding on to the ball maybe a little bit too long. But otherwise, yeah, there's you're 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 nitpicking, I think, with the Michigan offense with how successful it was for sure. Absolutely. The heart of this team, though, is the trenches. Yeah. The heart of this team is the trenches. Coming into this season, it's the best returning offensive line. They've also got Blake Corum, who comes back from injury. He ran for nearly 1,500-odd yards Mm -hmm. and 18 touchdowns before he got hurt. Donovan Edwards stepped in, came in strong when he had to late in the season. But it is going to be that two-headed monster of Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. The, The fascinating thing to me, frankly, is that most of the team is back. Yeah. And you don't see that a lot for, for playoff contenders or teams that were in the playoffs or just teams at this level. You rarely have it where this many guys are back. Yeah. And and so yeah. fourth in returning production on offense, 14th in returning production on defense. Those numbers are just, as I said, ridiculously high. Um, given their style of play, which is very dependent on that line and the power rush that Jim Harbaugh has in effect gone back to, it's really hard to see any kind of significant drop off. Would you agree with that? I think that's likely correct. The the question. Okay. So Jim Harbaugh is likely out. I don't know when we're recording this, if everything is, is certain, but the first third of the season, (laughs) wild four games, the first four of the games, the first four games, they don't really play anybody. I'll get into the schedule here in a little bit. The suspension, of course, due to some false statements that he apparently gave investigators from the NCAA. Um, we we can kind of address that here in kind, but I don't think that has any great impact, certainly not on the meat of the schedule, which isn't until later in the year. Yeah, so two new full-time coordinators with the departure on both sides, both in terms of finding a new job um, and also weird computer allegations or what was proven. So that was Matt Weiss, I believe, on on right. offense, and so it's... Sharon Moore taking over the offensive line coach, co-coordinator is now taking over the offense. So I'm sure we're going to see more of the same because why would you change it significantly, especially if J.J. McCarthy in terms of processing speed takes that next step. No reason to think he won't because physically the talent is ridiculous. So what they've done at the skill positions, what they've done recruiting, and that was the, the question before with receiver and tight end and running back depth of really true playoff winter wonder types. They have that. They absolutely have that. Um, so to me, the question more is if they're, if that's the system they're running and they lost what Biff Pogi, the chart, new Charlotte head coach, um, <laughs> who was sort of shadow head coach with Jim Harbaugh last year. Um, the question to me is just like, is the focus there? Uh, do they risk losing some of those, not 50, 50 games, but sloppier performances that, you know, they weren't always separating themselves from clearly lesser teams last year. You know, they struggled in the red zone a little bit. It's just, to me, it's just a week to week focus thing because I don't know, making yeah. the playoff three consecutive years, winning the big 10, three years in a row, not an easy task with Penn state and, uh, and Ohio state. No, I mean, my, my big question, I guess, with teams that have to play Michigan is how many could really match up with right. them in, in, you know, honestly, how many can match up with, this this style Mm -hmm. i mean they're going to be so physical up front they're going to beat your brains in by running the football you're looking at a very small handful of teams ohio state penn state um who has the line iowa illinois pretty good up front when when you're that loaded when you're this loaded as michigan is along the lines 
you're pretty well insulated from some of those fluctuations that tend to gobble up other teams. And it can still happen. It's college football. It almost did happen last year against Illinois, if we're being honest. But it just, to me, it seems more unlikely this season, given where they're at, given all the veteran leadership that they've got coming back. In a sense, the boredom with Michigan is the fascination. Right. And if you're a Michigan fan, of course, you're thrilled. This is kind of what it feels like to root for Georgia or Alabama, where every year they've established such a high baseline that you in effect, know what you're going to get, at least the worst case scenario, know what you're going to get. So I think it's Donovan Edwards. I think it's Blake Corum eating heartily on the ground because that's going to be the the focal point of this offense. Mm -hmm. Even if there are injuries up front, as you said, like Michigan is crazy deep with offensive linemen at this point. It's taking a while. Yeah, to and get they're hitting here, more in the portal too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've just been so astute when it comes to building up that side of the ball that Provided J.J. McCarthy can build a rapport with his guys out wide, which I don't know if he does, that probably plays him into a first round pick in the sure. NFL draft. It just feels like so much is going in the right direction for Michigan. I haven't even mentioned the defense yet. I haven't even mentioned the defense, Dan. Right. Maisie Smith, D.J. Turner, Mike Morris. I think I got the big guns that are drafted now and no longer playing for the team. However, the cupboard is so stocked, nine of their top 12 tacklers are back. This is basically a defense that is returning in kind. Mm -hmm. So just not a lot really to look at and, and, and split hairs over. Like, J.J. McCarthy is going to be better. The line's going to be the best in college football. The running back tandem might be the best in college football. And so long as Michigan just continues to do what it did really well the last two seasons, and we have no reason to think that they can't do it all over again— this is at least an 11 win team. Yeah. This might be a 12 win team. This is easily a playoff contender, easily a conference contender to get back to that conference championship game. Yeah. And I don't know who, by the way, this would be, but if there is that defense, I guess before Penn state, which is what the third to final week of the season, something like that. Uh, if there is a defense that forces Michigan into a more aerial game on offense, then it's a question of like, yeah, I think what Roman Wilson and Cornelius Johnson are like the expected two big names sure. at receiver and they're starting over again a little bit at full time tight end starter. Like it's where where is the dependable game changer at receiver? Cornelius Johnson would sort of not show up for seven straight weeks or something like that. Then I think he had the big games against uh, definitely against Ohio State over the top. Yeah. But yeah. who is that that receiver that can take a hitch? you know, 27 yards, you know, that is going to be able to stretch defenses or keep safeties back that can Michigan win in a two or three different ways. Can they win in two or three different ways if forced to? And that's the big qualifier because it's the qualifier before Penn yeah, state, they, like the best of Minnesota, maybe, but we'll get to them. They, their defense isn't probably going to be where it's been the past couple of years. Like who can force that element of Michigan's offense? I mean, what we saw with Michigan a lot last year was there There was a little bit of a crockpot situation yeah. where they would just grind you down along the lines. And then especially in the second half of the Ohio State game, when they won that half 28 to three, they were able to start popping big plays yeah. because of the run, because of the threat of the run. You know, J.J. McCarthy had a bunch of big plays and that ultimately took down Ohio State. They did the same thing. It happened earlier, but they basically did the same thing against Penn State as well. Mm -hmm. They just wear you down so much. They play such a specific brand of football that it takes a specific team, I think, in order to knock them off. You could not ask for more in terms of the schedule either. We already talked about the first four games, East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, and Rutgers. Right. Jim Harbaugh, his presence will probably not be that missed. They'll be just fine. After that, though, here are their road games. At Nebraska, at Minnesota, at Michigan State, at Penn State, and at Maryland. Those feel workable. Again, with the way that this team plays, sure. not dependent on the pass at all, though J.J. McCarthy can clearly throw it and made big throws last year, but that running game and that offensive line will travel. So I feel pretty good about that slate. As we get into November, that's when it gets interesting, right? They're on the road at Penn State. They got to come back home last week of the year against Ohio State. We can talk about the Buckeyes next, but look, if you are a Michigan Wolverines fan, and I think there is good reason that they... Michigan people talked about this all off season long. They are setting their sights down on Georgia. They are, they are making their off season sure. mantra to beat Georgia because they feel like they, they obviously play a similar brand of football mm -hmm. to Georgia. Maybe they're not quite as loaded on offense, 
but they feel like they play a similar enough brand. They feel like they've gotten the formula down and they feel like they could have been in that title game if not for a few breaks that went against them. So if you're a Michigan fan, like sky's the limit. Do you get the sense that Michigan either internally or the fan base expectation is they've been working to this year, that this is the the targeted year? I think they have Ohio State and Ann Arbor, yes? In Ann Arbor, So it's yeah. the, the Ohio State game is in Ann Arbor. They've got a quarterback who is now in his third season playing, second starting. The offensive line is deep. The defense is filled with star power. Will Johnson, by the way, or even like the Will Johnson, Marvin Harrison Jr. matchup at the end of the year might be the best one-on-one of the season in the sport. Mm -hmm. I love Will Johnson. And it's still Mike Sandra still on the other side, I think. He's been there for a good good amount of time. But it feels like 2023 is the targeted year for Michigan, schedule-wise, roster-wise. And then look, if you're talking about playoff comparisons – Georgia trying to go for three in a row, but starting over at a number of key places, including quarterback. Same goes for Alabama. Same goes for Ohio State, where at least going into the season, Michigan seems to have a leg up in terms of roster construction and experience that yeah. if not now, when for Michigan, right? That's interesting to uh, me about I, the, the Wolverines. Com- com- completely agree. Completely agree. There's, there, I think, again, the boredom is a fascination and... There is nuance within that. Sure. There are several interesting things that make Michigan just um, very, very intriguing, a very intriguing story to follow. Um, it's just so rare that you get this many guys back from such a good team. And I think that's why I'm so excited to see what they can do. 